Hey there guys, so today we're going to be looking at a comparison of the AMD drivers since the new 22.71 driver actually comes with a bunch of fixes for DirectX 11 games and OpenGL games. Today we're going to be just testing out a bunch of different games that have DirectX 11 and have built-in benchmarks. The reason we're doing that is to get proper comparisons here. And we're starting off with Metro Last Light, a bit of an older game here. Not the Redux edition, just the original older version running on DirectX 11. 11, you can see here that there is a noticeable uplift happening at the stock 15 watt TDP. Both are running with the lowest in-game graphics settings at 1080p. And here you can see that there is a noticeable uplift in the 1% lows and the averages here. Where our 1% lows now being in the 30 range pretty much means that we're actually getting a playable experience here, especially because the averages are in the mid 40s compared to the 34 FPS average that we're currently seeing with the old drivers and 1% lows that are dropping into the low 20s. So in general, this is a pretty major improvement and this is running at the stock 15 watt TDP. Now I'm gonna let you know now that this is not going to be an across the board improvement and that there are going to be certain regressions in terms of performance here. We're gonna be looking at a wide list of games spread out through a bunch of different generations and you'll see that depending on the age of the game, there might actually be performance regressions. So it is not an across the board improvement and we will also be testing out other games later down the line but this video is in particular testing out just the games that have built-in benchmarks but you'll see that overall the result that we're actually getting here with the new drivers is impressive enough to at least make me hopeful for the other games coming up but as you should know it is not an across the board improvement and we can bump up the TDP up to 25 watts here. And you'll see that a lot of the performance gain that was had because of the drivers are kind of eliminated here. You'll see that across the board, it is pretty much an improvement for sure, but it is not as substantial as what we were seeing before. So if you're on a system that actually lets you run at a higher than 15 watt TDP, you're not going to see as big of an uplift here, though there is at least some measurable improvement. It's nothing substantial. But if you're somebody that likes to play games at the stock TDP, it might actually end up being a pretty solid increase here. But at these higher TDP settings, at least in this game, it does not seem to have as big of a gain, but it still is a nice experience. And you'll see that actually what ends up happening is that the TDP is held far more consistently with the newer driver. And it really just seems to be an inconsistent thing. Certain games actually hold the TDP better than others. Others will end up fluctuating a lot and you'll see that a lot in the games that are testing so it almost seems like the apu tuning utility is kind of driver dependent on certain games but in general this is still a win for the new driver but just by a far far smaller margin now moving on to the built-in benchmark in Alien Isolation, you can see here that at the beginning of the benchmark, things are looking pretty solid for the new driver. But as things progress, things will level out and they will end up being very, very similar to each other. In general, it isn't a substantial improvement and you can see by the frame times that in general, the experience is going to be very similar between the two. There is a small lead being had by the updated driver, but it's nothing substantial at 1080p with the lowest in-game graphics settings so in general i would say that it is a small improvement but nothing substantial but considering that other games end up actually having performance regressions this can just be considered a win because it didn't detract from the overall experience and the small improvements that were had are at least welcome compared to the regressions that we see in other games now switching over to the 25 watt TDP, we see a similar situation where at the very beginning, the older drivers have a little bit of a stutter, but it all seems to level out. And in general, the experience ends up being very similar where there is some noticeable improvement in the new driver, but as things progress through the test, they really start to level out and those gains are really just kind of diminished, but in general, there is an improvement. So I would consider this one another win for the new driver, though we haven't seen anything super substantial, at least when it comes to raising the TDP. Raising the TDP really seems to give the APU a lot of the boost that ends up coming from these new drivers and the new drivers don't really seem to help out a lot when you're already 
running at a higher TDP. It seems to just be a couple of percentage difference, nothing major, but in general, you can't really complain over free gains like this. Certainly not going to be life changing or anything like that, and a lot of it can end up coming down to margin of error, but no regression so far, and at least minor improvements that seem to be measurable over multiple runs because I have run all of these at least three times. I say at least because some of them were giving weird enough results that I pretty much kept running them over and over again. And all of the results that I have been getting have been essentially what I have consistently been getting. But moving on to the built in benchmark in Batman Arkham Knight, you can see here that the performance difference between the two as the test progresses end up being very, very marginal to the point where they're practically identical. There is not going to be any real noticeable difference. And this is, of course, at the stock 15 watt TDP with the lowest in-game graphics settings at the full 1080p resolution. So if there were any gains to be had, they might not be measurable at this high a settings. Maybe if we drop things down, but at least at the settings that this was running at, the performance difference is really, really not different whatsoever. It's very, very comparable to the point where you would not really be able to tell any difference. But there is no performance regression at least. So we can consider that one a win. But really, in general, this is just so comparable to each other that, that you can safely say that there is at least no gain at the stock 15 watt TD but we can take a look at 25 watts and you'll see here that at the 25 watt TDP we're pretty much at the exact same situation as before where both are performing practically identically there doesn't really seem to be any major gains whatsoever so in general very very comparable levels of performance no real major gains and really no regressions you'll see maybe a one to two FPS difference between them but really it all comes down to margin of error running through this multiple times you'll see that sometimes one will give a little bit of a higher number but they're all within an fps of each other where it's just it's an inconsistent thing so in general pretty much identical performance nothing really major because there are certain games that actually have like measurably regressed and one of the games that actually seems to have had a measurable regression seems to be assassin's creed origins i ran through this benchmark multiple times pretty much ended up running it for almost a total of 10 times with each setting because the the results were so inconsistent i pretty much ended up going back and forth between the drivers you know doing clean installs of them and everything just to make sure that there was nothing up here because it was a noticeable and consistent regression in terms of performance the one percent lows pretty much took a measurable hit and so did the averages we're talking about performance that is low enough that this actually ends up making a measurable difference you'll even see that throughout the footage the newer driver seems to just stutter a bit more and the screen tearing is just a lot more obvious because of the fact that it's just running at a lower fps in general and this was after multiple runs after reinstalling the drivers multiple times switching between the two so this is just straight up regression in terms of performance in assassin's creed origins and this regression in performance actually ends up carrying over into the 25 watt tdp where you'll see that both drivers end up struggling to keep the tdp consistent but the newer driver ends up giving us a just noticeably lower result where in general it really affects any semblance of playability not to say that either one of these settings is really that playable at all but there is a noticeable drop in performance in the newer driver that is just consistently measurable so there is noticeable regression here but it is on a game that was already questionably playable on this system anyway but it does go to show that there are certain games that are actually going to end up performing worse with this new driver and to be fair this is currently a beta driver it is not a full release yet but this is the first time that the general consumers have had access to essentially the fixed version of DirectX 11 and OpenGL in the new drivers now moving on to Deus Ex Mankind Divided you can see here that with the built-in benchmark the performance is pretty much identical in the beginning here you can see that the old driver was performing a little better but as as the benchmark progressed through they both practically ended up having identical performance so in general you'll see that there is no real noticeable difference besides the fact that the older driver will sometimes have a stutter here and there that is not present in the new one so there is some improvement but it's nothing substantial it just really seems to only 
be an improvement in the sense that I never once had the, the stutter in the beginning that ends up happening with the older drivers. It doesn't happen all of the time, but it did occur after multiple test runs. In general, though, they both end up having very, very similar performance. I would say that at the end of the day, you can just say that it is pretty much identical. The new drivers seem to be just a little bit more stable in that it prevents some of the stutter that would happen here and there, but it is not perfect. So I would say that both drivers are pretty much identical to each other in this game because any improvements seem to be inconsistent and not very easy to measure. Now it seems like the 25 watt TDP is what unlocks a bit of the extra juice that comes from these new drivers. It ends up giving us a slightly better result, nothing earth shattering, nothing substantial, but it is a measurable improvement of a few FPS. And when the FPS is this low, it can actually make a pretty big difference in terms of playability. So in general, there does seem to be a gain with the new driver in this game. You just need the higher TDP. If you can't really use the higher TDP, it did not really seem to do anything to improve the overall result here. And it's nothing earth shattering, but it does mean that our averages do stay above 30 instead of hovering in the low to mid 20s. And that overall can make the difference between whether or not you even choose to play this game at all. Of course, I would recommend not playing at the full 1080p resolution and drop dropping down to 900p or all the way down to 720p, but it does seem like the new driver at least has a little bit of gain to be had here with a higher TDP. Now moving on to Shadow of Mordor, you could see here that there is no real gains to be had with the newer drivers. They end up being very similar. In general, 1% lows are within a couple of FPS of each other and the averages end up being also very similar to each other. The performance differences are nothing substantial. There does seem to be a slight gain in the new driver but it really isn't anything that you are going to notice while playing the game. And this is, of course, at the stock 15 watt TDP with the lowest in-game graphics settings. So we might see some gain if we go with the 25 watt TDP. And of course, at the 25 watt TDP, it actually ends up being a very similar situation where by the end of the test, it pretty much ended up being practically identical results. You'll see that at the beginning of the test here, it does end up showing the new driver in the lead. But as things progress through, things really just end up leveling out to be very similar to each other, where if you're actually playing the game and not just running the benchmark, it will end up being pretty much an identical experience. There is no gains to really be had here, but there are also isn't any real regression. So in general, it's kind of a win. It could be worse for sure. Now moving on to another game that I at first thought was going to have some performance regressions, but it really seems like as things progress, it ends up leveling out. And it, that is for Honor. We are currently running it at the lowest in-game graphics settings with the stock 15 watt TDP. And you can see that in general, the performance is very similar between the two. There is a slight FPS improvement, maybe with the new drivers, but it is a margin of error thing where after multiple runs, they sometimes end up just being pretty much identical. So there really doesn't seem to be any gains to be had in this game, at least with its built-in benchmark. So no noticeable or measurable gains at the stock 15 watt TDP. But of course, we can switch over to a 25 watt TDP to see if that actually helps out. And it does appear like the 25 watt TDP at least helps out a little bit with the newer drivers. In particular, at least in the beginning of the test, things were a bit more consistent but as things progress they do level out to be somewhat similar but the new drivers seem to pull ahead at least in terms of one percent lows and averages not by a ton of fps but by at least some measurable improvement and of course we are running at 1080p full resolution if i was realistically trying to play this game i would probably go with something like 900p or 720p and the fps difference might actually end up being more substantial there but of course since this is a long form comparison can't really just show every single setting for every game but these new drivers do have me very interested to try out a bunch of different games but you'll see that as things level out and finish off in the end here you'll see that there is at least somewhat of a measurable improvement in the new drivers and you'll see that even the frame times are just smoother and more consistent now moving on to another title that had very noticeable regressions we are taking a look at 
Far Cry 5. Far Cry 5 had one of the worst regressions in terms of performance that I have seen so far, in the sense that the 1% lows really struggled to even stay above 15, dropping down into some very, very low numbers in the stock 15 watt TDP. In general, not really a solid gaming experience, and it really ended up being an overall worse time. And this was a measurable, consistent experience after multiple runs. And of course, as I was switching through the drivers, because the, the games that gave me the most issues, I ended up pretty much just switching back to the old drivers, running the tests all over again, and then switching back to the new ones, you know, doing a pretty much fresh install of them just to see if this was a measurable, consistent thing. And it was. And what pretty much confirmed to me that it was a pretty legit regression is the fact that the 25 watt TDP did not really do anything to improve the overall experience. Our 1% lows are still noticeably lower than the old drivers and our averages are also noticeably lower and you'll see that the frame times are really all over the place. Now both seem to struggle to keep the 15 watt TDP or rather the 25 watt TDP consistent fluctuating all over the place but even with those fluctuations the older driver just seemed to do noticeably better in this game. It was just one of those games that had really really noticeable problems with the new driver. Hopefully by the time the official release ends up coming out these will be ironed out but as it stands right now there are a few games that do actually get performance impact from the new driver. And rounding off our list of games with built-in benchmarks that we're testing out here we have The Division 2. Now a lot of Ubisoft games were in this list, reason being is that Ubisoft seems to be one of the only companies that actually puts built-in benchmarks into their games, and I appreciate them for that. You can see here that at the beginning, it seemed like the new drivers were having some regression, but as the test went on, it just became very clear that there was at least somewhat of a performance improvement, but nothing substantial, and in general, it would really just become a luck of the draw in terms of running the test multiple times and getting slightly different results results between them. So there does seem to be a noticeable improvement, at least in the 1% lows. They always ended up being a little bit higher with the new driver, but the averages could end up being all over the place. So in general, there does seem to be an improvement in this game, but nothing substantial. I really wouldn't say that this is going to make a night and day difference. It is just going to overall make the gaming experience a little bit better because you're not going to have as noticeable a drops and stutters happening, but don't expect any miracles here or anything like that because the averages would end up being similar or a little bit below and really with this game it actually ended up being that it took pumping a whole 25 watts into the system for us to really start to see a pretty noticeable improvement not necessarily in the averages but the one percent lows are seeing at least enough of a difference that i would say that it would make a noticeable improvement in your gaming experience because having one percent lows that are dropping into the mid 20s is going to feel very very different than 1% lows that are dropping into the high 20. That 4 FPS difference there really can make a huge difference in terms of how the game plays because you'll see that the frame times are pretty much smoother overall with the new driver. You'll see with the old driver, they're spiking all the time constantly. There aren't really any moments where it's not spiking all over the place. While with the new driver, it is a little bit more consistent. The spikes are of course still happening, but they are a lot more smoothed out here. And that really overall means that you're going to have a nicer gaming experience. And this is a measurable and noticeable improvement. So as it stands right now, it seems like the new drivers actually do have some improvements in a lot of games. There are going to be a few here and there that have some regressions. And obviously I have a bunch more games to test out. We're going to be testing out a bunch of esports titles, not on this system. It's going to be on the 5600U. The reason I'm going to be testing that on the 5600U is because since it has the Zen 3 CPU, it pretty much has higher single core performance and there were a lot of esports games that were already cpu limited by the 5500u so the new drivers if there is any performance improvement in those it may not be as noticeable in the 5500u so i want to try it with the 5600u we're going to eliminate as much of a cpu bottleneck as possible to see how much of a driver performance uplift actually ends up happening in the esports titles because pretty much all of them run on directx 9 directx 10 and directx 11 but i hope you guys appreciate the look at this video
video. Really, I just ended up doing these specific games because they were DirectX 11 games that had built-in benchmarks. And built-in benchmarks are really good, not necessarily at telling you how good the game is going to perform in the actual gaming experience, but it's really good for comparison's sake because you want consistent scenes to really measure differences. Because if I just jumped into a map of CSGO or Valorant, game to game, it could just vary dramatically based off of what I'm doing, what abilities I'm using and stuff like that. So the next test is going to be far more informal because of that. And I'm going to make sure to preface that. But this specific test in general, it was mostly just to show you the differences in the new driver in a consistent way. So I hope that you appreciate that. If you liked this video and if it was useful to you, be sure to subscribe. I really appreciate that. And let me know down below any games that you've experienced any improvements in and any that you've seen regressions on because I have only a limited amount of games and time to test. So if you guys have any useful information like that, I would love to know it. And of course, I'm going to be essentially redoing my whole 5500U library at this point, mostly because I do different testing now. I do different TDPs and stuff like that. So you're going to see a lot of older videos that I've already done being tested with the new driver and essentially just to show you guys how it actually performs with the different TDPs because a lot of my older videos were essentially just at one specific setting and that was it and I want them to be a lot more useful to you guys but anyways I hope you guys appreciate all of this I will see you guys in the next one